With this video, I'm going to start going through what the different cards in your birth spread represent and how they operate and what they do. I'm not going to get into how your birth card is found and how your birth spread is found. All that you'll find in the time in the little book course where I cover all that. Okay? Here I'm just going to get into the fundamentals of what these cards are actually doing. Okay, so starting with the birth card. The birth card is like your label, your stamp. So you'll say you're a four of diamonds, a six of hearts. And when we say that, we mean that's the card that was ruling on the day you were born. Every day, one card rules. And it's basically the time lord of that day. It's the lord of that time. And what literally happens is every day, there's a cosmic force that gets to play the game of life. And with the card system, we see that, cards of that, that cosmic force as your birth card. So if you're a three of clubs, we're basically saying in the game of life, today the three of clubs gets to make his moves in the game. And this is a card game, so he gets to make his moves. And then the next day will be, you know, the two of clubs. Now it's the two of clubs turn to go. And they go around and they round, everyone having their turn. The only difference is when you play a game with four people or five people, everyone gets a turn and then everyone gets another turn and everyone gets the same amount of turns. While with the Cards of Truth game, some cards get eight turns a year. Some cards, like the King of Spades, just get one turn a year. Okay? So when they play, they have to be really serious, meaning, and those spreads are really strong spreads, the spreads that, um, you know, that you know, only happen once a year, when you have a certain car that only comes up once or twice a year, okay? So, um, so but this is what's happening, it's a, it's a time, it's time for your turn, Mr. Three of Clubs, it's time for your turn, Mr. Two of Clubs, and so on. And so during that day, that card is playing the game, it's his hand, it's his t turn to say, what am I going to do with my cards, okay? And the cards that they have are these 13 cards that fall under the birth card. Okay, the 13 cards that follow the birth card are the only cards that the, the birth card gets to play with. So on that turn, these are the cards I get to play with, that I get to use to make life on earth better. Okay? And every year, you'll have the same birth card, but a different hand a different 13 cards under the birth card, which means every year when it's time to play your turn on your birthday, you get a new hand of cards, okay, to play. And those, you know, you're dealt those hands on your birthday every year. And then of course, you use those cards throughout the year, okay. And on your first birthday, when you were actually born, you know, you get your birth card, which are 13 cards, and those 13 cards are the hand that you're stuck with for your life. Those are going to be the cards that are, you're really working with on a fundamental level. And every year you get a new hand, but you don't ever throw the birth hand away. That stays with you forever. But every year you get a new hand to help you modify and play with things and mix things up a little bit, only for one year. And then next year you get a new set of cards. So it's like a game where every turn, every year, you get to draw 13 more cards and say, hmm, how do I want to play with this, considering I already have these 13 cards that I can never get rid of? Okay? And that's the game of life, the card game of life. So, the birth card itself is that time, it's the Lord of Time. But it doesn't define all of what you're going to do. You know, what you can do, what your potentials are, are very much defined by these other 13 cards. The entire picture of what it is to be a particular birth card is spelled out by all these other cards. So, you won't really know what it is to be a four of clubs, let's say, until you understand every birth card in your birth spread. And then you'll see the full picture. So right now we're just going to talk about what it means to be a particular birth card, which will be part of the picture of your life, okay? But a very, very important part that's always going to be there, okay? So, your birth card is basically saying, it's time to focus with this. This is what I'm focusing on. This is what I have to focus with, 
Okay, it's the time. And, um, you know, the best way I think I can describe it is saying, okay, this is what it's time to focus on. So if you have a diamond as your birth card, any diamond, it means it's time to focus on what's worthwhile. Okay? And that has a lot of meaning. Well, what's worthwhile? What worth, what's worthwhile means what's worth doing, what's worth having, what's worth being. And the key word here is worth. It has to be worth it. Okay? And, you know, so for instance, being the, you know, most famous person in the world, well, is it really worth it? A person has to decide that if they're a diamond birth card. Is it worth this for me? And great things like being the most famous person or being the richest person or being the most powerful person come with very high price tags attached. And anyone who has a diamond birth card is here to find the worth of being anything. Meaning, I am this and I have to pay this much to be this thing. Is it worth it? Okay? So say you're an astrologer or a card reader. Alright, you love reading cards, you love astrology. But then the day for a diamonds person, it comes down to it, is it worth it for me to be this thing? Because now everywhere I go, people are nagging me to have their readings, and that makes me happy, or that makes me feel overwhelmed. You know, it depends. But the point I'm making is, everything we are, everything we have, we have to pay a price for it. And that determines the worth. Worth means you have to spend to get it. Nothing's free. Everything comes at a cost. So diamonds are here, a birth card diamond is here to figure out, is this worth it to me, based on what I have to actually pay? And once a diamond birth card starts getting clear that this is worth it to me, and this is the amount I have to pay, and it'll work for me. When they start thinking clearly like that, their lives get a lot, are working better. A birth card diamond whose life is not working really well, is a person who, um, you know, wants something and when they get it, they realize how much work it is, or how much they have to pay for it, then they freak out and run and leave. And eventually they end up having nothing in their life, because they never figure out that they have to pay a price for something and they're, and they're never okay with that price. The challenge of any diamond birth card is to find out the price and to pay it willingly. Okay. Sometimes diamonds, they have to pay a price and they do it grudgingly. So eventually they just want to renege on the deal. But the truth is, anything we are, anything we become, anything we do, has a price attached. We have to make sacrifices, we have to spend time making the thing work. Whatever it is, it, there's a big price tag to everything. Is it worth it? A diamond's birth card is here to find out what's worth doing for them. Okay? Meaning, they willingly will pay the price because it's worth it. Like if you buy something, someone will go buy a $3,000 TV. And they're so happy, right? Oh, I just bought this TV, it was, it was $3,000, I'm so happy, let's plug it in, see what it looks like. To them, they just spent $3,000. Wow, what a bunch of idiots. But from their point of view, it's worth it. They got a new TV. Yes, the TV, now that they hung it on the wall and took it out of the box, is only worth $1,000 if they try to sell it used on Craigslist the next day. But they're still excited they got the TV. It was worth it to them to spend that $3,000. Now, another person who's, you know, living in, you know, in a bad neighborhood, just surviving, barely paying their rent, they're looking at that and going, oh my God, for $3,000, I could live better than I am now for three months. Because I'm living on $700 a month. And if I had a thousand a month, I'd be living like a friggin' king. To them, it wouldn't be worth buying that TV. So, worth is a personal thing. Okay? It's a very, very personal thing. Diamonds are very personal suits. They're one of the red suits. Red suits are very personal, meaning what's worth it to one person may not be worth it to another person. So, as a diamond person, a birth card diamond person, goes about trying to figure out what's worthwhile for them to be, what's worthwhile for them to do. They have to use their own monetary system and not the monetary system of other people. Um, when I see diamond birth cards people using the monetary system of other people, meaning the value system, what's worthwhile system of other people, 
they usually find themselves not very happy because they're the one who has to pay the bill. So it has to be a price that's worth it while to them. Okay, nobody else. So a big challenge of diamonds is to be able to determine, you know, come up with their own value system. How much is this worth to me? What compromises is having a relationship worth to me? You're going to have to pay for it and that payment is compromise and sacrifice and work. Everything we have required those payments, compromise, sacrifice and worth and work. It's going to take work to have it or to become it or to take care of it. You're going to have to compromise somewhat because you'll never get exactly what you want. doesn't matter what you want to buy. Go. Every time I want to get a new laptop, I'm like, oh, forget it. I'm not going to get it because the compromises are too big. I'm just going to stick with my old one. You know, there's the compromise always. The fact that you're never going to get exactly what you want. Some things are going to be like, I have to settle for those. Okay? And then there's the... Um, Oh, when I say there's the, the sacrifices, meaning because you're doing nothing or having something, there's something else you can't have. So say you're into cars and you want to get an old Ferrari, so you get an old Ferrari. Well, getting that old Ferrari means you can't get an old Porsche now because there's not enough room in your garage. So you have to make the sacrifice of not owning the old Porsche too. Okay? Um, or when you marry, you have to make a sacrifice. All right, by marrying this person, I sacrifice A, B, and C people. Okay? Um, or, you know, by marrying this person, I sacrifice my, you know, trips where I just go bumbling around the world, not even knowing where I'm going and hanging out in the Orient for months at a time, smoking hash, you know? You have to sacrifice some things. There are certain things you just don't get to do anymore. And sometimes it's just because you're doing this thing, so there's not enough time to do this thing. Like the last year and a half, I worked really hard in my house and I had to pay the price of not spending as much time running because I was tired from working on my house. Okay? So, we have to make a sacrifice. So, a diamond's birth card person is here to find out what sacrifice is, what, um, you know, how, what work, and what compromises they're willing to make to pay for what's worth ha for what they want and that it's a worthwhile purchase. Okay? And ultimately the only commodity is time, right? We only have so much time. Time is the bottom line commodity. Work takes time. You know, compromises are usually the result of not having enough time to have your cake and eat it too. So in the end people have to figure out what their time is worth when it comes to what their birth card is. What's their time worth putting into considering it's going to take work, compromise, and sacrifice to have anything that's worth having. When a person pays those consciously, they're doing it because they know that thing's worth buying. And then they're going to be satisfied with it and live a happy life. But if they don't pay those things consciously, they end up paying them unconsciously, meaning they pay them without realizing they have to pay them. And then they end up feeling like they got robbed, they overpaid, they're grudgingly paying, they're resentfully paying, and all those types of things. But so any diamond's birth card is really here just to see, just to say, okay, what's worth it to me? What am I willing to pay for this, that, and that? That's what they're here to find out. And as soon as they find it out, the better off they'll do. Now, depending on what the diamond card number is, they'll be going about that in a completely different way. So that's the bottom lines of what a birth card, diamond birth card is doing. So as that diamond plays the day and says, okay, this is my turn to play the game of life. I want to get my, what's worthwhile to me. And that means I want to get what's important to me and I want to pay a price that won't kill me, that I won't resent, that I can be happy paying. And then they're like the person who buys the $3,000 TV and they're excited about paying that price. And they're excited about making the sacrifice of taking the painting off the wall and tossing it and putting a TV up, okay? Because there's always that sacrifice to be made when we want anything. All right. I don't know why I started with diamonds exactly. I think I was looking at some charts this morning that were, were diamond birth charts. So I just kind of was focused on diamonds this morning. But um, normally I start everything with spades. So we're going to skip over the spades now. Because spades is the first suit, as you all know. So... If you're a spades birth card, the spades that are playing your life, 
that have ruled that day, the Time Lord of Spades at that time, is saying, all right, in this turn, I'm going to try to become stronger, better, healthier, especially healthier, mentally, emotionally, and physically than before. This is my chant, you know. So when a diamond birth card run, runs, it's the chance for life to say, okay, I want to get what's worthwhile to have. I want to live the life that's worth living to me. But when a diamond, when a spade shows up in this spread, this, you know, when, a, when the, sorry, spades birth card runs, it's basically the time to say, okay, now is the time to get healthier, stronger, okay? Healthier in body, mind, and soul. And that's what the time is for. It's really just so simple. I love space. So simple. If you're a spades birth card, it's the time to get healthier. Okay? Um, mentally, emotionally, and physically. That's what they're here for. Okay? And spiritually, of course. All right? Um, their happiness depends on how much they grow as a person, how much they get healthier. If they get healthier, their life feels like it's worth living. If they're not getting healthier, their life doesn't feel like it's worth living. They need, if they're getting stronger with themselves, feeling more capable in themselves, feeling there's a better chance for them to survive, getting psychologically healthier, getting physically healthier, getting emotionally healthier, then life feels like, yeah, it's working. And it is, because then that time is being used effectively. So imagine these cards are playing a game, right? And say a spade comes up, and now it's the turn, it's the time to make life healthier. But if the spade fails in that, it basically means you screwed your turn up. If a five of diamonds, not a five of diamonds, if any diamonds fails to um, find out what's worth, the, what's worth to them and what they're willing to pay for, then it's like, that card wasted its turn. It's like, well, I tried to figure out what's worth it to me. And I didn't figure it out. So I screwed that turn up. Next turn I'll try better. Okay? So all the time, these cards have this turn that takes your whole lifetime. But just a moment of time to, the, you know, to God, to spirit, to the cards, to the deck. Okay? And um, we don't want to screw our turn up. So for the spades, that means... Now's the turn to build health, to get healthier. If you screw that up, nothing else is going to work. If a diamond shows up, now's the turn, the time, to play the cards in a way that you figure out what's worth living for, what's worth having, doing, being, and, and, pay, and gladly paying the price. If you can't figure that out, nothing else is going to matter. Because this is what the turn is all about. It's the only move that matters is that birth card, okay? All the other cards below your birth spread, they're just different ways to help us um, do that birth card, to take advantage of that precious turn that we're being offered, okay? Let's say you get a hearts card as your birth card. Well, now it's the time, the turn, where it's like, okay, in this turn, what needs to happen is I need to develop connections. I have to feel connected. Okay? I have to feel connected to people or family or God. I have to feel a connection. This is the turn, the chance to feel connected. Okay? To be with something. And by something it can be a person, it can be an animal, it can be, you know, um, it can be an aspect of God. Okay? Because spiritually, of course, the um, hearts are... So I might have said cups a minute ago. If I did, I apologize. The hearts are, um, are devotional. They want to be close to God. So this is a time to connect and be close. So if a hearts card figures out how to be close, they've, then, then they won that turn. Then they got ahead in the game on that turn. You know, they got to rake the chips off the table. You know? But if a hearts card doesn't learn how to be close, then they wasted that turn. The turn is really about how do I connect? It's like, okay, now it's time to connect, you know, to life in some form, some way. And by life, I mean individual lives, greater lives, social lives, and spiritual life. And any of those, doesn't matter which one, which one is your connection if you're a heart's birth card, all right? They 
need to have connection. Their turn, their life is successful if they are able to establish connection. Okay? And like anything else, we have to find what works for us. So a spades person tries to get healthy and they find what helps them get healthy. But they also find a lot of things that don't work, that don't help them be healthier. Okay? Well, likewise, a diamond person, a diamond's birth card, tries things and finds out they're just not worth it to them. And they're like, that's wrong for me. And a hearts person tries connection and finds out that's not the right connection for me. So there's always a trial and error process in whatever card you have. Because it's a process of learning to do this better. So for the hearts card, it's like it's time to learn to connect on a deeper level. For a spades person, it's time to get healthier. For a diamonds person, it's time to find more worth in their lives. You know, to have life be more worthwhile. Okay? So every time we are cast this card, this birth card, it's time to take that to another level in this lifetime. That's what we're here for. Let's take it to another level. Okay? Alright. Then we have got our clubs. If you have clubs as your birth card, it's really simple. It's time to be busy. It's time to work and be busy. Clubs are all about work and busyness. All right? It's time to get shit done when you're a club rising. Or not a club, but club's birth card, sorry. It's time to be busy. Because there's times where you can get things done. And that's the club's time. Clubs get the most done. Okay? So, imagine your god playing this card game, right? With, you know, all the different gods are lined up around the table playing this card game. Or God by himself, you can say, is playing the card game. And now God gets a club card. He goes, alright, it's time for me to actually get some things done. You know, I spent all that time when I, had my, when I drew the spades card, you know, getting healthier, creating a healthier humanity. I spent all that time with, when I had the diamonds card, getting, you know, helping humanity find what's worth doing in their time. And then I spent all that time when I drew those hearts cards, um, helping humanity connect to something so they don't feel so alone. But there's all this stuff that needs to get done. There's all this stuff that needs to be figured out, worked out, and just surely work needs to be done so that, you know, people can have things to see if they're worthwhile, so that people can know how to get healthier, so people can, you know, understand different ways to connect. You know, it's time to get some things done here. So, what needs to get done by the club depends on the person. Okay? Just like what's going to be the right thing for a heart to connect to depends on the person. What's going to be the right road to a healthier you depends on the space. And what the diamond needs to make life feel worthwhile depends on the person. So, the club is, gonna, is here to get things done. But what is it they need to get done? That depends on the club's person. Okay? But uh, when it's a birth card as the club, yes, it's time to work. It's time to be busy. It's time to say, something needs to get done here. What's it going to be? What is it that I need to get done? And if a club's person finds something that is interesting and exciting to them, that makes them want to put their energy into the work to, to do something, they're doing good in life. The club's person who can't find something to do is a club's person who wasted their lives. They're here to be busy, okay, to work. And it can be in any field, in anything. It's completely open. It depends on the person. It depends on their birth spread. It depends on the planets and where they're located in their birth spread. It depends on all that. But they're certainly here to be busy, okay? You're here to work and be busy. Um, and lots of ways that sounds like the simplest, easiest one to be. And honestly, in some ways, I do think it's easiest to be a club than it is to be any of the other cards. And the reason is because so much of life as it is on this planet in this day of age is, let's be busy. Let's, it's time to work. So you're five years old and you go to kindergarten six hours a day. So you're working at school. 
Then you go to first grade and you start bringing homework home. And you have work to do. Homework. That's like home clubs, right? You, you bring your work home with you. You don't even get to leave your work at school. You know, clubs are, do usually, clubs people do a great job with their homework compared to, you know, hearts people. I mean, hearts people, oh my gosh, they can be so difficult. And diamonds people, and even spades people, but red people, hearts and diamonds, oh my gosh, if school's not worth it to them, getting them to do their homework, oh my gosh. If they're not feeling connected at school, getting a heart person to do their homework, the club person is like, yeah, let's work. Let's get this homework done. There's something to do. Do and done, right? So, a lot of the way the world is set up, you know, by the fact that life takes so much work to, um, to be a little easier on clubs, I think. But, it's no more satisfying to clubs than it is for any of the other suits. Because the work the clubs do does has to be what's right for them. That's what makes their life, you know, livable. If they're constantly doing work that's not right for them, life just won't be livable. The work they do has to be work that reflects who they really are. But then they still have an easier time doing all the work that doesn't reflect who they are. And that's the difference between clubs and other suits, is they have an easier time doing the work that doesn't reflect who they are. Let me give you an example for my life. I'm a seven of clubs, right? So I'm a club's birth card. Growing up, I was always really into something as a kid. You know, if like from my youngest age, I had my things I was just into. And I'd be so busy with those things, working around the clock. Friend calls, you want to do this? I'm like, no way. I'm doing this, dude. I'm doing my work, whatever it was. And then, of course, I had to go to school. And I had to do my homework. And to me, those things didn't seem like a burden. Even though I was so busy all day long, all weekend long with the things that were in my important work, you know? And, but I would, you know, I'd go to school, I'd do my homework as quickly as I could. I didn't care what grades I got, it meant nothing to me. I was just doing the work, you know? Okay, it's homework, I'll do it. And I would get it done as fast as I could, and I, um, you know, just, just did it. I didn't care, I wasn't worried about my grades ever. So why did I even do it? Well, because it was work, and I wanted to get done with that work. And so I would hustle and get done with the homework. But on the side, I had these exciting things to me, this work I really wanted to do. So I was always spending lots of time doing that, and only a little bit of time doing the other work, just enough to get it done, get it out of my way. And because I had the work that was my work, I was, I was, I was doing pretty good. Okay, I didn't get into a lot of the trouble that lots of kids get into and stuff. But if it had just been the work that school imposed upon me, that my parents imposed upon me, and I didn't have my own personal work, the things that were exciting to me, I would have been a really depressed club as a kid. Okay? So, but even though I had my exciting things, it was so easy to do that other stuff. You know, whereas I knew other kids that wanted to connect you know, like hearts kids, and they, you know, they were really, they wanted to connect to things, and connect to life, and connect, was it their music, or connect to their, whatever their art, if they were artists, or if they were really social, connect to their, because again, hearts are also work, I'm um, sorry, art and music is hearts too, right? Or they'd be more social, and they want to connect to their friends. And just the idea of having to spend an hour on their homework, and doing that work, and take them away from what they wanted to be connected to, Wow, they would just forget to do their homework until the last minute, then they're stressed out about doing the homework. And some of these kids, I would just hand them my science paper in five minutes before science class, they would just scribble something down on theirs and then hand it in so they didn't flunk, you know. And I couldn't get why these kids couldn't like manage to get their homework done for as a club. It was just so easy. It was like, oh yeah, just do the work. You know, just get done with it. You know, there's this needs to be done. I'll do it. But for other suits, if it's not part of what they want to connect to for a heart, if it's not worthwhile for them as a diamond, if it's not um, what's going to help them figure themselves out of their spade, become a healthy version, healthier version of themselves, or a stronger version of themselves with their spades, it's really hard for them. Now, spades are really interesting. Lots of times, spades people have a really easy time also doing the extra work that life requires of us similar to a club, but for a different reason. 
It's often because they want to prove that they can do it to themselves. You know, spades, one of the things they love doing is proving I can do it. You know, they're always up for the challenge of it. So my sister, she was, she's a spades birth card, right? Oh my gosh, the time she spent on her homework, wow. She was, she was an athlete, she did all that stuff, but she also had to prove that she could get the best grade. She was a straight A student forever, you know. I mean, I would get C's and stuff, you know. I mean, I never really got D's, but I got plenty of C's and maybe one or two A's and mostly B's because I just, was, just wanted to get it out of my way so I could go have fun. But my sister, she just had to prove to herself that she could do it. It made her strong. So spades, lots of times, when they're trying to grow stronger with themselves, they'll take on any work, any challenge, and they'll just say, give it to me, let me try, and it, just to get their muscles going, okay? Um, but it's the hearts people and the diamonds people more who are like, why should I do that? It's not worth it to me. And they can be real problems getting those kids through high school and you know even grade school to get their homework done. I know my diamond daughters, they didn't want to do any work that wasn't worthwhile to them. I mean, it was just impossible to get them to do any work that wasn't worthwhile to them. Um, so, clubs have the easiest time in the way the world's set up. But again, they're not going to be any more happy, any more satisfied, unless they're doing the work that's important to them. So, I, yeah, there's plenty of work to do, and the clubs, people can do any of it, and feel like, okay, I'm busy at least. They won't be any happier than any of their suits, unless they're doing work that rings a bell in them. Okay? And then, they're going to thrive, because they're doing the work that's right for them. So they need to find right work. Okay? How much energy it takes to do the right work isn't part of the equation for a clubs person. Clubs are all about energy to put into work. Okay? Um, how much time, energy, etc. a diamonds person has to put into something is everything. The price the diamonds person pays for what they have in their life is a huge part of the equation. For a clubs person, it's not part of the equation at all. The only equation is, this is the work I want to do. And it doesn't matter how much energy, how much time, how much work it is, it doesn't matter. This is the work I want to do. That's what they need to find. And so, Whatever your suit, um, on your birth card, that's what you're here for. This is when God has drawn that card saying, okay, it's time for humanity to work today. I'm making workers. And if these workers can figure out what work is right for them, the world will thrive and they will thrive. And today is a diamond day. And today it's time for humanity to figure out, for people who are born to figure out what's worth living for. In this shitty world, we have to pay for everything you get, okay? And when the spade card comes up, God is saying, okay, it's time for these, the people born today, it's time for them to get stronger in mind, in emotions, and in body. To train and get stronger. They all need to find the thing that will make them stronger, better people, okay? Stronger, healthier, not better. Healthier is a better word, <laughs> okay? And if, a heart, if, if it's a heart's person, God is saying, okay, it's time for the people born today to learn how to connect, to find what they can connect more deeply to. And whatever they connect deeply to, they'll pay any price for it. They don't care how much it costs. The only one who cares about the price is the diamond. Because worth means you have to pay for it. So whatever you get, you have to subtract what you pay for, right? But hearts... It's time to find what you can connect more deeply to. And if you're connected to that, nothing else matters. No other price matters as a result. It's just important you find that connection that's so important. So if I see a hearts person who has a special connection, whether it's a spiritual connection, a connection to a person, a connection to animals even, a connection to a child, if they have a special connection, then yeah, their life becomes worth living to them. In the end, we're all trying to make worth, life worth living. Because in the end, the last suit, and I started with the first, is the diamond suit. So in the end, we always want to have our life worth living. But for a hearts person, that means the connection that's worth being here for. For a club, the work that's worth being here for. For a diamond, 
the concrete experience, the concrete things that are worth being here for. And for a spade, in getting stronger, getting healthier, that makes it all worth being here. Okay? So this is the thing these four suits have to figure out if that's your birth card. Okay? If you manage that, and if you find you're working along those lines in your life, then your life is going towards prosperity and health, of, you know, mentally, physically, and emotionally. Mental, physical, and emotional health and prosperity, if you're seeing yourself doing that with your birth card. If you find you're not doing that, if you're a spade and you're not finding the road to becoming healthier and stronger in yourself and psychologically more capable, if you're a heart that's not finding greater connection, if you're a club that's not finding meaningful work for you to do, and if you're a diamond who's not finding anything worth having in this world or worth living for, then you're going to find your mental, emotional, and physical health and prosperity sliding down the hill, declining. It's a really easy way to measure yourself. And the cure is in what is the cure is already given. If you're a club, okay, forget all the other shit. Find meaningful work. If you're a diamond, forget all the other shit. Find what's worth living for on this world for you. If you're a spade, forget all the other meaningless shit. Just find out how you can get stronger and healthier. And if you're a heart, forget all the other bullshit. Just find out who or what you can be more deeply connected to. And then your problems will resolve, solve themselves. Okay? And your birth spread is just what's going to help you. You know, it's your hand. You know, it's the card you get to play with to make this miracle of your birth card happen. Okay? Thank you.